Hello, welcome to the moon. I'm Mick, we're playing Station Ears. I can see my house from here. Yes, today we're on the moon. We've got a little creative world that I have created here just to show off my latest invention. Now, I'm pretty happy with this one, I must admit. It's an ugly bit of code, but I've finally got my printers to work the way I want them to. Happy times. Um, it's an ugly looking build there, but it shows what it's got to do. So I'll be placing this world up on the workshop there because it's fairly involved setup. But this is it. My printer logistics. Take two. Now we've done printer logistics before, but it never really worked the way I wanted to. It did it the best I could at the time, but I've learned a bit since then. And I've discovered a new command and now I can get it to work the way I wanted it to in the first place. So I'm pretty happy with this one. That's still an ugly bit of code but it does what it has to do so let's have a look at it shall we now what I've got here is the printers are connected to a vending machine the vending machine has a heap of ingots in it they all hooked up via a conveyor network which goes all the way around all the way around the other printers has an output stacker and back into the back of the vending machine so, input short to shoot there. Now, how this one works is we have, when you're building stuff there, you have requirements for the recipe. Once again, this one requires iron. When it runs out, you've got to stack it in. But it only has the iron in there. The other one's there. This one requires iron, gold, copper, but it doesn't have any. If I switch the machine on, you can see we'll get requests from the vending machine to send out the items at once. And whoop, there's the iron in. Now we'll send out another one. Oh, there's the gold in. And here comes another one. Whoop, there's the copper in there. We're now ready to go. We can print. It's not sending any more because it only needed those two, those three there. If we pick a different, different one, yeah, that requires the same thing. Uh, Blue capsule. Ugh, anything? There we go. We need Astra Loy on that one as well. It knows it's got the first three, so it shouldn't just now request the Astra Loy. Hello, Astra Loy. Do I have Astra Loy in my thing? Oh, uh, things do occasionally get lost. If we push the reset button, I don't think I have any Astra Loy. We now have Astra Loy. Don't you love creative smelting? Now, it is still looking for Astraloy, but the machine didn't have any. So we've actually got to come down here and press the re re recall button. There we go. Now Astraloy was requested. Here it comes. And it's in the machine now. So we're good to go. And once we're finished with the ingots, or if we don't have anything in there, if I, if I did that on another machine and needed Astraloy and didn't have any, I can just pull the, open the machine, everything gets sent back out, it goes around the loop, and it'll all go back into the back of the vending machine so that another machine can use those ingots. Boop, and they go. One, two, three, four. So another machine can now use them. Now, as before with the previous logistics one, I've got this one set up to just bring everything around in a loop and it eventually comes out to the same stacker here. Now with this previous one there you can only have one machine active at a time. But with this one I can actually have them all going at once. If I switch them all on they'll all just request the ingots that they need to make whatever they're going to make. And then they can start printing. Let's see how it handles that if I've asked for so many things at the same time. You've got yours. Ugh. Too fat to fit through there. You haven't got any copper. You're good. You've now got the copper. And you're good as well. Sometimes if you get multiple things re requesting different ingots at the same time, they might not come through. You might only get one of them vended. So that's when you just got to come back and press the activate button again and it will reset everything. So. Now once again we can print stuff out 
And away it goes. They all go around. If you've got lots of things coming into the same same thing, they will interfere with each other, but we've got everything going at the same time. Just that they are all sharing the same stacker there, so they may just cause problems with each other. Yeah, that's not stacking very well. So, this. So, the other setup I've got is this one here. So, it's pretty much the same. The difference being that instead of having the outputs go back into the conveyor loop, they will come out to their own stacker each. So this one here, once again, we've got the same ingot distribution network. It's just the return only comes out to here. So now if I switch everything on, that we can have more going. They're all using their own stackers. They are stacking properly. So the trick with this one is, though, if we want to we want to return the ingots back into the, the system when you eject them they're just going to pop straight out here and you have to return them manually back into the vending machine but you do have a separate stacker for each machine so you know, it's six or one half dozen or the other you decide which way you want to run with that one so the code on this one it's a bit of an ugly code there so I won't run through the whole lot here what we have Value to our devices, the printer sort of vending machine and your reset button. Now all the machines are using the same vending machine and the same reset button, so it's really only a separate printer and sorter that you need for each each machine. Now the only variable I have aliased is the ingot hash. Now that's just the hash prefab hash value of the ingot that's been requested, and of course our ingot class for the sorters. We set up, we sort our, set our motor to mode 2. That's what you have to do to get the, the chip to, to, to use it. Now I've got a little loop here because this, this is just to set the chip. So if you've got a, a stacker hooked up into the loop instead of one on each, each device, uh, it'll need a separate code. So I've just written a separate code down the bottom there just to sort the ingots from everything else. That's just if you're using an output stacker and not separate stackers. So don't worry about that one. That's just a one there so I can use the same chip with the same program to do that as well. Uh, but once we get here, here, now I am using the printer input memory to, uh, to, to count when the ingots have arrived in the machine. I'm not really happy with the way that works, but it's the best I can manage, so that's what it does. Now we set our ingot hash to minus one. That is going to be the controlling variable that we use to control our loops. Uh, so now we're into our main main loop here. We load, which well we check check our sorter to see if there is anything we want in there. We check printers, we check the button to see if that's been pressed. If we get down to here and if if our ingot is hash is minus one nothing has been requested so we keep going down this down the um, the program we get to here we get to this horrible big lot of code this is using our load reagent command here so we've got it here our load reagent where we want to store it the device the reagent mode now what this one does is you can either have it tell you what's in the printer you can tell it what's it, it needs to print the recipe, or you can tell what the requirements of the recipe are. So we're using the required ones. So we're just interested in what, what we're missing, what we need that we don't have. So it is asking, you, you have to ask for each ingot specifically. You can't just ask, what are you missing? And it comes back and says, I need copper. Now you've got to ask it, do you need copper? Yes or no? Do you need gold? Do you need iron? Do you need lead? You have to go through each one of them there. So it looks like a long bit of code, but it is just repeating the same thing, asking for different ingots. Now then we select the set our ingot hash, depending on whether or not it requires it. So the answer of that one will either be either zero, we don't need it, to zero, the recipe doesn't require it, or zero, we don't need any more, we've got enough. Either way, it doesn't care. In which case, ingot hash will just remain whatever the old value was. If you do need it, it will change ingot hash 
to the prefab hash value of the copper ingots. And it goes through and checks each one. Now, if it needs more than one item, it will overwrite that prefab hash with each time it finds something else it needs. It doesn't matter because it will go through the loop again and it'll find something else. The important bit is it comes out the end of the code with either minus one, it doesn't need anything, go back to the start, or the hash value of something it does need. So from there, we then request it from the vending machine and go back to the start. Now it should be on the way. So our ingot hash is no longer minus one, it is whatever hash value we've got. So we get stuck in this loop here where it is checking the sorter, waiting for that to turn up. Now, when it does turn up, it redirects it to, to the printer and it sets our ingot hash to one instead of minus one. That's to let the code know that it is between the sorter and the printer. So we don't want to go back and re-request it yet, so we've still got to wait a bit longer. Then we look at the, the counter on the printer, the import count. When that counts up, it's arrived. So that's good. We've asked for the ingot. We've sorted it. We've seen it with a sorter. It's arrived at the machine. Set everything back to zero, back, back to minus one. We're okay to have a look. We can pick out what the next one is. So that's the rundown of it. Now, sometimes, as I say, sometimes if you request something that the vending machine doesn't have, I probably could trap errors on that and flash a light or something, but I haven't at the moment. I'm happy with it the way it is. And sometimes the uh, sorter may not spot it as it goes past. It may redirect, redirect it the wrong way. Um, if it does, it'll get stuck in this loop here. Uh, that's where you put the button, you press the button, it just resets it to minus one and it goes back through the loop again. Uh, so that's the way it works. That's probably a bit of a backward explanation of it all, but um, that's how it works. I shall put that onto the workshop, ready for anyone interested. I shall put this world onto the workshop for anyone interested. So now I have to go back to my base on Mars and try and fit all of that stuff into that little slot I have where I'm building things. I don't think I'm going to have to go mining again for quite a while. Right, messy. Now I might push that wall out a little bit, make a bit of room on there. And I shall push that one out a little bit up there. So I'll have to seal off that and seal off that. Right here. Walls and windows. And I just ruined my printers so I don't have any. That was thinking ahead. Well done. Do, 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 do. Have I put an edging on that? Oh, how's that for some beautiful OCD? Damn, impressed. That should be sealed now. And of course, I'm going to have to put the edging back on my windows. And you, and you. And I'm trapped. Now I have some more space. You can go there. Yeah, over there will do.
Mm, where are my stackers gone? Sorters. Sorters, that's what I wanted. Sorters, not stackers. And I need another one. And there it is. I <laughs> see, filing system works perfectly. You. And we're done with shoots. Ah, pep bloody time. You. One, two, three, four. Oh. Boop, done. Boop. Now. Oh, shit. The switch is on the back behind there, isn't it? Wow. Ass. How the hell am I going to switch that on? Hmm. I love it when a plan comes together, but today it has a knot. Was it this side? Jesus. Oh, who puts on off switches on the back of machines? Damn you. Um. Right. Well, there's ways around that. I should say, save, vend, on one. Right. Blink. So now, I switch that on. She works. And we're on. Woohoo! Good oh. Uh, where did I put my walls? Honey, where's my pants? Um Oh they're on the walls. Jamas Right Logistics is done. I just gotta stack the vending machine. Ah gripies. All stocked up. We're good to go. Now for the big moment, does it work? You work with your silicon. You need iron. Wait for it. We have iron. Excellent. Iron, gold and copper. Wait for it, wait for it. One. Give me some gold. There it is. And some cuprium. Bada bing, we're there. And boop. That should be ejected out here. Ha 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 ha! She's working! <laughs> there we go! My new logistics system is working! Vending machine can store a hundred items, so I can fit a hundred stacks of ingots in there. It should be better than having little piles of stuff around here. That's good, look at that. All machines are active, all machines have ingots. It just requests new stuff when it needs it. <laughs> so yep, that's one of my better builds. And of course, we've got a better build. Only one way to do that. The Ludi Run! Yay! We did well! We did well! Got a new logistics system! Woohoo! Ludi Run! Yeah! That's the stuff! Uh, yeah, so... Logistics version 2, John. Now, Mick, till next time, happy building. See ya.